Hi everybody, coming up on today's Retro Robin Show, I'm going to talk about two of my favourite games. One of them deserves more credit and is rarely mentioned these days, but is an absolute classic. So join me next for the Retro Robin Show. Hi everybody, it's Wayne Retro Robbins for the Retro Robin Show. Today I'm going to talk about two particular games, one of which is not talked about enough and is an absolute classic in my books and uh, is very underrated, uses the full capability of the spectrum and is one of my all time favourite games. Also it was a budget game and a crash smash. The other game is just an arcade shoot em up with great a way sound and a good feel to it. Now, back in the days of the Mega Drive, or the new PlayStation, whatever progress you made on the games, you could actually continue from that particular time. Unfortunately, with us Spectrum owners, if we didn't complete the game, then we'd have to load it again another time and try again. We couldn't save halfway through our progress. There were games that got around this, uh, where you could save, yeah, from certain stages, but generally speaking, the majority of the games, you either completed them, or you had to start again. That was before we had something that could do a snapshot of the memory, or even the multi-phase 1 to 8 to save our progress from where we had actually got to. But besides that, if you got to level 10 on Manic Miner, then effectively, you'd have to start again if you wanted to play the next day. You couldn't start from level 10, could you? So, the first game I once had as a pirate copy off my mate who didn't copy me the full 128k version of it. So I'm just going to do it. I'm, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. So what's so special about this game? Well, the whole feel of the game was absolutely brilliant. Huge map size. It was an isometric game, I admit. And I know there was a fair few isometric games out there. And the 48k version was brilliant. The game I was talking about is of course Amorossi. But I didn't realise how good a feel of the game was going to be until I got the full 128k version of it. To which I scoured the internet looking for this tape and round various car boot sales. Um, a couple of times I bought this tape from people on the internet and all they did is they copied the 48k version onto a C15 and put an inlay card in. So I didn't get the full 48k version of it then. And it was only when I was going through lots of my retro gear that I bought in bulk that I came across Amorotti. And I thought to myself, oh this is going to be another one of them 48k versions. But then I saw the sticker which told me everything I need to know. The sticker I saw was that one a crash smash and there it is so I knew I had the full 128k version of this game so let's have a look at the game shall we why do I think this game is so under talked about and so good well straight away you can see we've got an absolutely phenomenal AY sound and of course the keys are QA PL space is to fire one bot and you can do damage in the district. So without no further to do, let's have a look at the game. The starting sequence, if you like, these cities that you all gotta save from a swarm of mutant flies, if you like, because that's what they look like. All have different types of graphics to them. So I thought that was a Amazing for the 48k Spectrum, must have used every ounce of the memory. And then you have this starting sequence as well. A bit over scale, but it was great to watch. If you only ever played the 48k version, then you came to this, which I hunted down for a long time. You thought, wow, look at all this. Well, obviously, it goes without saying nowadays, we don't uh, take much notice of all the extra capabilities of the machine. But what I think really made this game phenomenal is 
once the flies got a scent of you, if you run into them, they would follow you everywhere across the entire map. So you used to press caps, you could have more bombs, rescue repair. But of course it cost you, it costs you money to do that. So yeah. But the maps were quite brilliant and um, you could actually change the colour as well. But just listen to the sound as I play this for a little while before I talk about my next game. It was so eerie, so spooky and gave a really good feel to the game. And of course you have to, those arrows are pointing to where the flies are. Um, so you can track where those nasties are. Uh, they wouldn't kill you by a single one touch, but you'd have a your damage is a percentage, and as your damage goes up, if you don't actually go and rescue yourself and repair yourself, then that was the end of the game. But the game end could also come in many ways. If you'd run out of money um, through being needing to repair and rescued many times. As I say, once they've got the all sense, he will follow you. And the key to playing this game is not to kill the queen straight away. Because if you kill the queen straight away, then they won't follow you at all. They just go random and it's hard to hit them. But if you can get them to following you, effectively you've got to sort of almost walk into them. And especially if you can get two to follow you, it gets easier. Because then if you miss, you're probably going to hit one, at least one or two of the other. And you can see the percentage of damage going up there. Get yourself on a good clear run once you get far enough away. And unfortunately, if you do miss, you then got to wait for that bomb to hit something before you can launch another bomb which was quite soon in that case well I could have sworn I, there must have been two flies there because I could have sworn I hit him oh and that looked like it bounced right on him so what would I like well, I'd love to see this on the Spectrum next when I get one, but with a better scrolling system, effectively that needs to stay there in the centre of the screen, but the, you could still have the animation of the scrolling, uh, but the screen moving, and that would probably complete such a brilliant idea of the game. Multiple maps, it would take you hours and hours to do. I keep missing today, but that's not good. <laughs> and once you can see that bomb slashing in little red flickering lights, I'll just enlarge that so as you can see. This is one of the few games that I was good at and I really enjoyed it, but it's the games you enjoy that you get better at. Well, you could get yourself a power bomb, which we'll do now. By pressing that, you want the super bomb. That arrow will then point you to where the super bomb is. And as you can hear that music, isn't it fabulous? Isn't it absolutely fabulous? I must be really close. You might see there, there it is. Can you see it parachuting down? And once you've got that, you only get to launch it once. You've got to track the queen down. And you get the animation of you destroying the queen. However, you've not completed it because you need to kill off all the nasties. And that is Amorotti. So, 
one for you to try. It's a 10 out of 10 from Retro Robbins. It's a special, it's a fantastic game. Please try it. Shall we move on to my second of today's choices? So a quick bit of editing. This is my favourite shoot em up game. Won't make it too obvious. But the AY sound in this is truly phenomenal. Let me move the uh, picture across a little bit. There we go. My head isn't in the way. Good thing is you can redefine your keys. What makes this game so entertaining? Well, I'll show you now. Effectively, you can dodge it to shoot them up. Where you destroy the ships. You can destroy them in two ways. But what makes this game really interesting is the way it gives a little musical interlude jig as you get past every level. Almost worth it for that. <laughs> and of course the best way to avoid them is to hide. <laughs> uh, which you can do in one of those there. It's particularly not crash into it. Not quite easy to navigate but once you get the hang of it it becomes a really good game. You can destroy them by shooting all of those out. And then when you get the game complete first level. Boo! And that's the game. And even when you, I'm going to have to die now, show you the ending tune. When you put the high score in you get an AY tune, that's quite well done as well. And this was an arcade conversion. And I'll definitely give this for addictive quality. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10, a full retro and wobbling special. So I'm working on the program where you choose to be your favourite AY sound game, which I'm hoping to do obviously Friday or Saturday and I'll uh, re release the results of that. What you have voted as being your favourite AY sound, the one with the most votes or the most mentions, I'll put it number one. Um, hopefully I'll get them all to load and play so I can actually not only just tell you a list, show you. I'll do some more random game select and of course I'll review two or three maybe even more games from out of a Crash magazine to see if they stand the test of time. But for me Retro Robins thank you for watching, please like, subscribe and share and uh, I'll do some more shows very soon. In the meantime everybody take care, have a nice working week and weekend and thank you for watching.